All right, hello Bloodball fans and welcome to another Wood Wars. This time I am up against the other tutor, Mint, also known as Lilica, also known as Pixie Dust. I don't know what his coach name is. We'll find out in just a second. But I'm up against Mint, who is the tutor of the Nurgle team. It is considered his speciality, and that's what he's playing here against my Kemri. I can finally stop saying I don't know this coach because we finally played. Let's see how we do then. We're in my stadium, but that doesn't make a lot of difference because I don't have any, any uh, because I don't have any enhancement on this team. Pro Stumblers against Baby Guard something. I didn't quite catch the name. My Pro Stumblers are singing "Dance Like an Egyptian." And what are they called? Baby Deaf Guard. Okay, that's a. It's a disturbing name. And they are singing Disturbing Presence. That's the song now. They made it up. Uh, I would sing it, but I can't make my throat do the things that they make their throat do, so... Unfortunately, I can't give you a rendition myself. But it was beautiful. Alright then, coin flip. Alright. Coin flip went the way of Baby Death Guard, and they chose to kick, which I'm pretty sure I misread because I thought for some reason that I was defending in the first drive, as you'll see when I set up here. And he's made a very solid opening defense, and he's moving it about, so I'm going to stop talking for a second. Okay, lots of mind changing, but that's fine. Okay, so we've gone for the basic spinal setup. There we go then. And I've gone for my kind of normal. No, I haven't actually. I have changed my mind as well. Interesting. So, like I said, I thought I was. Um, I thought I was. Defending for some reason, that's why I put my pieces off his pieces, but um, I wouldn't normally do that. I'd normally take the punches early on. And I've gone for a kind of arrow shape with the two guys out of the way. Oh, let's call this the bubble. That's what I'm going to call it from now on. I've gone for the bubble. Alright, then here comes the kick. And the weather is nice, which is always good news. You can really smell the rotting flesh on the Nurgle when the weather is nice. And I do my best to deal with the fact that I thought I was defending by moving pieces into a kind of screen just to keep Nurgle as far away as possible though I would have preferred to be punching these three pieces in the first turn for now I'm just going to punch two of them and using Iblitra The name of the game against Nurgle basically is um, stop them. That's basically it. To stop them from coming forward as Kemri. And to be honest, the name of the game as Nurgle against Kemri is exactly the same. Oh, and that's a hard foul appearance for me. I've now got four pieces stuck here. I can still take the block against the Chaos Warrior, but this is going to be a one die now, and it's just a push. That's an awful first turn for me. But at least I got the ball. Didn't have to worry about that one so much. And Beast comes straight into the action and wraps his loving tongue around my Frora. It was a bit clippy, it was kind of funny. And it looks like Pixie Dust is going to go for a knockdown Tomb Guardian. Hope he disappears gameplay here. Which is fair, he had to take a wing anyway, no matter what he was doing, he was punching a Tomb Guard, so... That's fair. He's also going to stand off the other one, just to make sure it doesn't come too far forward and doesn't get a free block on him. Hasn't left me much here, so I grant him that, that was good defense. 
And he can take a few blocks himself, maybe do a bit of damage, because there are many skeletons, and the skeletons have AV7. Yep, spoke a bit too soon, there's a stun. And we'll let the Blitz Rar as well. And he's not going to reroll that, no. Last action of the turn, no point. That was good, that was a good first time for Nurgle. They've kind of locked me up. Though, they've left the center a little bit exposed, so I'm going to focus my efforts on the center. At least I hope. Though they've got so many pieces in support, it doesn't really matter which way I go for now. It's just good defense from Pixie Dust in general. At the moment I'm trying to make him commit to one side or the other. That's all I'm doing by moving the piece around as opposed to actually starting a fight. Sure about that. All right, we're going to take a one die push against the Chaos Warrior, the Nurgle Warrior. Sorry, I keep saying Chaos and Nurgle Warriors the wrong way around, and we keep him on the Kemri piece, and we'll punch the other Warrior, and that leaves the Fro Arrow in his own next to the Beast. Not really where I want him to be. Uh, I do a handoff for some reason. Well, I've made a kind of cage, just trying to force Nurgle forward basically, so I can get around them. The name of the game is still to stop them from coming forward, but I mean, I need them. I need them to now because of the way he's defending. So, Pixie Dust has forced my hand, basically. So, good play by him. This is our first game to each other with each other, so I think we are kind of feeling each other out. I don't know if he watches my content. I don't think he does, so he doesn't really know much about me either. So at the moment we're both playing kind of cautiously. Ah, that was a nice little tongue whip. And my Ferrar is not coming back this turn. It takes a one die on a, ca on a Tomb Guard. I'm not so sure that was necessary, but yeah, he's keeping me in. Nice he's keeping me boxed in. That's fair. I move the Tomb Guard right back where he was, and the other one's going to come in support now. We are going to try and move the ball this turn, though there's not really many places we can move it to, unfortunately. I kind of hope that he commits a couple of pieces to this Tomb Guard I've just put to the outside, especially as he's the mighty blow piece. Though we're taking most of our blocks with the block piece. That's one thing I forgot to mention, actually. Pixie Dust has made this team very block-heavy, which is unusual for a Nurgle team, but um, it's very sensible. It's very easy to go Mighty Blow, Mighty Blow, Mighty Blow, Claw, etc., piling on, blah blah blah, but block makes the team relatively safe. You're more likely to win with an all-block team than with a murder team. So I applaud Pixie Dust on his choice of block. Though he did say that he's got about 12 different Nurgle teams. Some of them are sensible, some of them are crazy, so there is that. But this one I'm playing in particular is quite a sensible team setup. And it's a good matchup for Kemri, to be honest. It's a good matchup against Kemri, I mean. And we get a stun again. At least nothing's injured yet. Pretty sure the first injury is going to be mine. If no, for no other reason than he's getting all the blocks, basically. If I'm honest, I'm kind of a bit lost at this point, because uh, I'm not really sure what to do against him the way he's playing. Which is all credit to him. He set up a very flatline defense. There's no easy way through. I need to punch a hole. And Kemri is not good at punching a hole, really. And there's our first permanent. And it's a Blitz Rao. That really sucks. There's a KO on my armor value A piece. And Specimen, specifically. And more one dies, but they're working for him. And he's got lots of blocks, so the one dies are relatively sensible. Realistically, I should be blitzing with... Tomb Guardian, but he's just made it so I can't. I need to get him off the ball instead. And that's what I'll do with a skeleton, probably. Probably this skeleton. It's 
Standing up first. The attrition war is always going to be won by Nurgle, so I've, pro I've probably made a mistake, to be honest, by waiting and not moving forward with the ball. I should be forcing him to reposition. But I'm not doing that. And I'm sure he's happy about that. I think I could have taken a one die block here. Yeah, this one doesn't have. Oh no, it would be a half die. Uh -huh. Yeah, okay. Yeah, he's keeping my team guards out of action. Uh, gotta respect that. He's doing very well in that regard. Though this one's gonna be hard to put down. He's probably getting punched by this one this turn. And getting punched by the tomb guards is pretty scary for him because the two on the flanks both have mighty blow. And that's our first really stupid. That's quite an important one, actually, because his team is slightly out of position. Uh, he needs to do some damage here, though. For some reason, he stayed on the tomb guard. Probably would have been better off following. So I don't hit him. Because for now, he's actually finally out of position, and I can do something with it, hopefully. And I think that was a mistake, because he's actually put the Blitzer into a position where he can easily blitz the Pestacle with a 2 die. So I guess that was a slight oversight on Pixie Dust's side. I will take this block first, though, because I'm kind of itching to punch something with a Tomb Guard. Oh, and it's a good punch. First punch with a Tomb Guard leads to a KO on a Warrior, which is huge. And that means that Frora can move into a scary position for Pixie Dust. I actually have position. And just a push isn't good enough, so re-rolling that, that's much better. Not gonna follow, don't need to, and... I forgot who this is, I don't, know, I don't remember his name, but the fast skeleton can get out of the way now. And... Should have done a handoff, not a pass. That was poor. Definitely should have hand handoff then, I was looking for SPP, that was a bit greedy, and I got bitten for it, so fair enough. That means the beast can come right over in my face, which is really bad news. Really bad news. I mean, I still would have had that problem, but at least the ball would have been in my hands. Yeah, that was that was the worst play I've made so far this game. I think the handoff would have failed anyway, to be honest, but still, it would have been safer than the pass, regardless. Oh. Oh. That's bad news for him. That actually gives me an out. As long as the Tomb Guardian doesn't screw up the block, I'm away. So I didn't get punished for that mistake, actually. And we're going to do that now. Taking the two down the beast. And that's a push. It's not really good enough, but it'll have to do. Oh, don't need to take that one. Oh, and I double skull it. Ah, and I reroll into something just as bad. At least they got a KO off it, but yeah, I should have picked up the ball first, realistically. I was actually playing with it. I was playing whether to pick up the ball or play for security. I was going to put the Blitzra into a better position than where he was. That was the idea there, but yeah, I should have picked up. In hindsight in the game, I think I said that, and in hindsight looking at it now, I should have picked up first, definitely. So I made a mistake there. That may well cost me my drive. I have to take a wrestle because the Brota had block. And almost everything had block on this team. It's uh, interesting, I've never played a Nurgle team like this actually. They're quite scary when they're all blocked up, so if you are a coach who likes Nurgle, then maybe consider the block route. Nurgle Warriors and Pestigals, the Beast, they're all scary as they are, but if they have block as well, even before the strength things, then yeah, they're a difficult team to put down. They're like Norse, but scarier. Well, like Norse, but scary, to be honest. Norse aren't really that scary. I'm going to try and punch the...
Pestigor, I guess. Yeah, that makes perfect sense. No, we're not getting to the ball this turn. And we're not scoring this drive, that's for certain. Another foul appearance is a shame. Uh, I didn't actually see where that was, to be honest, but either way, and I take a skull. That's the end of that. It doesn't look like Pixie Dust is scoring either, to be honest. He can, but it's really hard for him. But he doesn't need to score, I need to score because it's my drive. So a few mistakes this drive. The original setup was just an oversight. I thought I was I thought I was um, kicking for some reason. I wasn't expecting Pixie Dust to kick. Ah, there's an injury. Took that turn to end his turn though. So the setup was wrong in the first place, and the mistake of handing off, uh, passing instead of handing off, was also a mistake. And uh, also, I should have probably moved forward earlier, but I didn't really have an opening, so... Well, should have been a bit braver in the first few turns. And we're getting a lot of downs at the moment, on both sides. That was just two turns, one block, two down each time. So Pixie Dust is probably just going to do some injuries, or at least try to, and that's going to be the end of his turn. And that is one, unfortunately. So Relic is out. I'm down to one thrower. And no regen again. Necro is working well. I played this game before the game against Jekyll, so... Yeah, in this game, the regen wasn't working for me, and in the game against Jekyll, the regen wasn't working for him. Uh, well, it was working for me, more to the point. It was working really well for me, actually. Alright, half time sees us nil nil. There are two injuries on my side. Really need the KO to come back. And he doesn't. That's going to make the start of the drive really hard. And both of his warriors come back. That's just hard. So, Pixie Dust still has his team of. 13, and I'm down to a team of 9, I think. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, yep. Yeah. Put all the team guards on the line, and then change my mind. Okay. Alright, we done now? No? Okay. Difficult to remember what I did. Alright, we've gone for the circle in the middle, two team guards on the line with a skeleton. Yeah, the four team guards on the line were, was probably a better setup, to be honest. Though I considered that I wouldn't be able to move the Tomb Guards, and that was why I decided against that setup in the end. I needed the maneuverability a little bit. That's always the problem when you're playing as Kemri, you've got to worry about the positioning of your Tomb Guards, because they can't move very far, so if they're out of position, you're in trouble every single game. To be honest, even putting two on the line is pretty bad. But I definitely don't want this agility piece on the line. I've made that mistake once, and I'm not making it again. And quick snap is bad. That means he can lock up the tomb guards without any issue at all. Uh, he fails the pickup at least, but not going to affect him much. Immediately two dies the tomb guard. Uh, I also left the mighty blows in the middle. That was really bad. All around bad decision making, basically. Though that push is good, it gives him a little bit of freedom to get out of the way. Yeah, I gave up some two dice way too cheaply there, though. I'm down numbers, but still. And the quick snap obviously helped. And the last Tomb Guard's getting punched as well. All three Tomb Guards had a two die against them that turn, that's awful. That's nice though. Forcing him to reroll in the first turn. I don't think the reroll was necessary to be honest. I know that he explained it and said he wanted it to be able to use the beast, but. No, I don't think the reroll is necessary, honestly speaking there. Could have saved it for later. Nah, I don't have the numbers anyway, so... 
you've got me out of position regardless, and you've got the numbers on me, so I'm going to struggle to slow you down no matter what. Well, not slow you down. I'm going to manage to slow you down, but I'm going to struggle to stop you no matter what. Should be blitzing with one of these tomb guards realistically. Not against the beast, hopefully. I'm gonna punch the pestigore, that's much better. With mighty blow as well. That's good. No armor break, but that's fine. And we're going for one die to start with. It's risky, but it works. If that went wrong, actually, he'd be in a lot of trouble. I'd be able to get to the ball. But it didn't go wrong, so whatever. Yeah, he's managed to lock up the ball successfully there. He's kind of forcing me onto him, but um, I'm not going to bite. Because that's what he wants me to do, and I'd rather stay in position defensively. And we take another stun, which is quite hard. If I lose another piece or two, I'm really in trouble. I'm already in trouble, but I'm in extreme trouble if I lose more pieces. Oh, didn't need to reroll that. Did not need to reroll that at all, but at least we got a KO out of it. Would have been better off taking the push and punching one of these two, because I'm going to get surfed here probably now. Yep. Oh, Aaron, what are you doing? Yeah, we take a KO from the Surf. Wouldn't matter if it was a KO or not, just losing the piece is bad enough. And then down to 8. Against 10. Still, one more injury and we're basically out of team. Kemri don't do well with low numbers anyway, but when they get lower and lower, it's a really big problem. Didn't need this extra assist there. Not sure why he did that. It's kind of just a better position than it was, I guess. I can see that. And this last rod is going to come over as well, surely. Oh no, we're going to lock up the last tomb guard. That's fair. This is basically what you want to do against Kemri, is make sure the tomb guards are on the wings. So, he's done this very well. Though I have enough pieces to make a solid screen. Assuming that there's no problem with the roll here. This last piece is going to come out as well, that's the idea. Oh no, I'm not doing that. Okay, I'm going to use the tomb guard as the last piece. I see. This is where he is, I've got a solid screen now. And I dodged. That was crazy. Was that the agility plus piece? No, that was crazy. And we get another punch on that Pestigore, and defense is pretty solid here, actually. Yeah, he did something well for a change, this match. Though it's easy to punch a hole. And Pestigore runs right through it, I'm in trouble. Maybe it would have been better off committing to one side, so we had to force it the other way just to slow him down longer. But as it is, yeah, if you punch a nice easy hole there, Pestigore runs through, and I can't really stop him. Assuming that he moves these two pieces in support as well. Hmm. Okay, looks like we're not running through. Oh, we are. Okay. Mm, 
Well, that's fine. He's got a pretty solid screen here. This piece is locked up and not getting through this way, so that's fair enough. He's also locked up the Blitzer arm, which helps him a lot. So I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to go for a slow defense of everything out of position. Yeah, I really should have forced him this way. That would have been the better play there for for me. Even though the defense looked good at the time, they looked good even in the replay. No, really should have committed to one side, so we had to go the other way. Because if he goes the other way, he can't move as far forward. That's the, that's my point. And I sacrificed the plus agility piece, just to get an extra roll out of him. Really? No. Oh yeah, we stood up. We're not moving. And there's a skull. And a KO. Uh, that's it. This drive is done. We're going 1-0. Don't have the numbers to cause enough trouble anymore. To be honest, he doesn't even have to move this turn. He can get rid of a few more pieces, starting with this one. Yeah. He'd be better off holding the drive as long as he can, just so I can't score back. So, he's best off not moving at all. Just keep taking blocks on these pieces and forcing me to remaneuver. Re Good play from Pixie Dust all round. Oh, not sure about moving the ball, like I said, but otherwise, good play from Pixie Dust all round. Yeah, but moving the ball actually gives me a chance of slowing him down, because I can actually base him at least. Or well, I can't with a push, but if it was better than a push, I would be able to base him. By moving forward, and specifically by moving into the side, he's actually given me a chance to close up a little bit. Uh, the skull. The skull doesn't help though, and the KO. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Well, if this was me, I'd actually hold him until hold the opponent until the very last turn, just to assure ensure that we have this win. And at least Fracture's being stubborn here. We kind of need him to remain stubborn for the whole of this match. Oh no, maybe not. Oh, he's dead instead. There we go. He was stubborn just to die. Come on, regen. No. Well, that sucks. I'll be replacing him after the match then. Because he is the Blitzra, and unfortunately he was the Mighty Blow Blitzra as well. I'm still moving forward. I, I'm not entirely sure if he's just trying to put pressure on me, or if he's actually wanting to score early here. But when you've got four of your opponent's pieces, there's absolutely no point in scoring early. Because you're just going to give me a chance to have, what, eight? And the ability to score back? It's not really worth it. I'm going to force him to score early if possible. Showing him that I am going to red dice my way out. I can't dodge though, so that's no good. And we are going to punch the beast. Take that beast. And dodging. Just in case he tries something really crazy. Yeah, because he's moved forward now and this piece is in the way, he kind of... He has to commit himself to getting rid of this piece and potentially scoring. Oh, that's a stun now. There you go, he's fine. He can wait. But he doesn't. Oh, he does. Good. Yeah, there we go, he's waiting. Yeah, fair enough. Well played. Keeping me right until the very end. I cannot respond to that now. It's 
So the inching forward is strange, but it's worked out. It's worked out in his favor, so that's fair enough. But if I had the numbers, yeah, you would have been forced to score probably. Yeah, I've got literally nothing I can do. I'll take a I'll take a two die on the a half die on the warrior. But that's it. I'm probably just gonna run it in now, that'll be the end of that'll be end, the end of that. Yeah, he's not trying anything silly. Fair play. Well done, good job. Basically the best result you want in Nurgle against Cameron, I think. 1-0 with the entire pitch gone. <laughs> Can't ask for more really. And we get one round of punching at the end with three dead and injured. Two of the KOs come back, two stay out, they've had enough, and the warrior stays out as well, he's decided he does need to help the team. And the thing I really like about Pixie Dust, more than, more than anybody else I've faced in Wood Wars, is that he makes an anti-riot setup. And that is... that's great. A lot of coaches are afraid to do that, they all do the push at the back thing, but he's done it right, he's made an anti-riot setup, which is always good on turn 16. I'm going to load the line as much as possible, trying to get some SPP out of this match more than anything else. But I didn't go for a riot setup. And the riot comes! So, kicking myself now, because I'm not scoring with a Tomb Guard, and all of my movable pieces are out of position. Also, I have to take one more round of punching from the Nurgle team, which is bad news for me, considering how well the punching has been going for him. I don't know why I based the Rotter. I'm going to punch the Pestacle, that makes sense, but I don't know why I based the Rotter. But there we go, I did. Oh, and follow Y. I'll pick up. We can maybe do a pass, but hopefully not going to bother. We're not even going to pick up, so that's fine. So, Pestacle's turn 16. Pestacle? Nurgle's turn 16. Two die on the Tomb Guard that I gave freely. Three die on the Skeleton if he wants it, which I gave freely. Oh uh, no, there's no free die actually, but still. Two die I gave freely. And then it's a bit trickier for him, so he leaves it at that. Fair enough. We're just going to go for a pass. We're kind of done with this game. Just going to try and do this as last effect. And the pass fails, so we go... Into full time, 1 0 down. Well played, Mint. Really well played. I'm impressed. And looking forward to a rematch. So, pro stumblers, one death, four armor breaks, and Deposit, who is quite new to this team, I think, got MVP. And one touchdown, 16 armor breaks, which is quite a lot. And Rotter got MVP and actually leveled up. And SPP in general, I just got the five. And it wasn't as good as it looked for him, actually, so we've got seven, nine, 11 and 14. Well, that's it for this Wood War. I'm going to be interviewing Mint as soon as possible, and this game is going to be again in the background probably. But I will be interviewing him as soon as possible, just to talk to him about Nurgle, and I think he's down as another team, but I don't remember what the other team is, which is quite bad, but, you know, there are too many of you. I can't remember everything. So, um, we're going to be talking as soon as possible, hopefully today, actually, about his experience in Blood Bowl, and his advice, basically. 
thanks guys for watching that's it for this one and it's been a while since I've done Wood Wars I would like to get a few more out but uh, I think I've played most of the coaches that regularly play friendlies now so I don't think there are many options left I may start playing the same coaches again anyway thanks for watching if you have got this far I'll see you all in the pitch soon bye bye for now